Okay, now what I have for you today is a video on how to change a water pump on a 5.0 liter. I'm talking the old 5.0 liter uh, when it came out a long time ago back in the 90s. Uh, this one's on a 1997 Mercury Mountaineer to be exact. And it's pretty packed in there considering the small inch compartment and then the big 5.0 in there. So it looks daunting, but I walk you through it, including what to do and what not to do and what to watch out for as you go along with this procedure. All right, so the first thing you gotta do is drain the coolant, obviously, start getting that draining or doing everything else. These have this big old weirdo shield down here to protect them from debris, I guess. So we're gonna have to take out two 10 millimeter bolts, one there, one there on each side. And they should come out pretty easy on here. And here's that shield taken off of there. Now there's, there's gonna be a lot of bolts with this job. So what I do is I keep all the bolts that are with the thing I took off with it. And that way nothing gets mixed up and cross threaded and different threads and lengths and all that stuff. Never a problem that way. And now you can see there's tons of access to that drain cock on here. It's on the passenger side, so you gotta turn that. And get it draining out while we're taking apart uh, the rest of the engine compartment. Now once you start getting this draining and there's a pressure loss in the system now, we can go up top and pop that cap and it'll drain out a lot faster. Pop your cap on here, turn it slowly, make sure you're working on a cooled engine obviously. And you can probably hear it already, it's just flying out of there now. Now in order to get to the water pump from the top, I like to get everything out of the way, including upper radiator hoses, intake hoses, everything out of the way so we have clear direct access to it, we can bolt it on there and do it right. So we're gonna get the air intake off of here. Mass airflow. And then it connects right here also. Air intake sensor. Just a hose right here. Might be stuck in there pretty good. Should just pull out though. There we go. Get that off to the side. So we're gonna unclip our air box here. And then we're gonna take off this clamp right here and take it out as an assembly. All right, now that the coolant has drained enough, we're gonna start getting the upper radiator hose off of here. I leave it attached to the radiator itself. We'll pull it off of the thermostat neck right here. Clamp it, pull it up a little bit. And then hopefully you can just twist it off of there. Now if you can't get it off of there and you can't get a tool in there to pry on the underside, it's kind of hard to get to, especially on this one. There's this cool little tool they make, it even has flames on it like that, look at that, huh? But look at that hook on it and the angle. And these are made just to get uh, stuck on radiator hoses off, any kind of cooling hose, uh, without damaging it. If you stick it in here, something like this, like that, right? And then you just work it around and that'll break the bond from, you know, years of being clamped on there. You just go all the way around. And break the bond. And then once you work it around there enough, you should be able to pull it off of there. Morrison, get this out of the way also. Same thing and get ourselves some working room. All right, next we're gonna get rid of the fan here so we can get rid of the radiator shroud right here also. Could try to get both of them out of here all at once and then we'll have a lot more access down with that water pump. We can start getting the belt off and all that. You're gonna to wanna to keep the belt on until you get this off of here. Now the nut down there for the fan clutch is 36 millimeter and you're really gonna need a thin wrench, kind of like what I have. Um, otherwise, uh, these little bolts 
on the fan itself, I guess you could loosen them and try to get it out of the way so you can get a regular 36 millimeter opening uh, wrench in there and tap it loose. But it is a, uh, a uh, regular left hand thread. So we're gonna loosen this. Tighten here. And then once it's loose, it'll literally spin. No problem, it'll come right off. Once you break torque on it, you're good. Just get it most of the way off. And let's get the fan shroud loose. So these, when this comes off, we take this off with the fan shroud, nothing gets damaged. But you can see it's loose now. Now luckily this fan shroud is very easy to come off, it's nice and thin, and it's just two bolts, one right here, and then of course one on the opposite side here, and that just hooks in down below here, let's see if you can see it, and so once these two bolts are out, the fan shroud's loose, and then you can pull the fan, thrust it away off, and take them out together. By the way, these are 10 millimeter. Then it simply pops off in the bottom. Something like that. You can see it's loose now. We just need to pull the fan off. And just be kind of careful. These ones are all metal, so they're a little heavier. It's nothing too big. We just don't want to damage the radiator core, obviously. We're fixing one leak. We don't, don't want to make another one. Radiators are not cheap. So what I'll do is I'll keep spinning it from this side, not two hands on it. So when it comes off, it's gonna drop. Won't be expecting it. It's gonna seem long-winded, but it's not so bad. Get this ear past the trans line. There we go. And then once you're able to, get the fan out of here and we can fight the shroud the rest of the way without interference. And just keep shimmying it out of here. All right, next thing we're gonna do is get this belt off of here. We're gonna have to release tension on it. And the tensioner is right here in the passenger side. You'll see it's got a big old weird pulley on here. It's kind of different than the other style tensioners out there. And it has a 15 millimeter bolt in the middle of it. You just simply turn it to the right. You see that? And then you slip the belt off wherever you can. It's a little hard because I can't pull it off with the camera in the way, but I got it off the other pulley, and then the whole belt just comes off. And then the whole belt just comes off all the pulleys. Put it to the side so you don't get no coolant or anything on it. All right, we're getting closer and closer to the water pump. Like I said, I like to get everything out of the way that may be in the way so we can get full access to it and do it right. So we're gonna pull this idler off of here also. It should be a 15 millimeter. And then on top of the water pump right here, we have a couple hoses. There's a heater hose right here that clamps onto it. And then this one right here is a bypass. We're gonna get rid of those. And after that, we can go for the pulley and the bolts and all that stuff. All right, next thing we're gonna do is get rid of the tensioner, a 10 mil bolt right there. And then there's one down here. We get rid of the tensioner so we can get access to the crank sensor connector. And we get this harness out of the way of the water pump. Now in order to get this connector off of here, all you gotta do is press on that little tang and pull and it'll come right out. 
I can tuck this harness up here, out of the way. And now all we have left is our water pump bolts. And now we can just jump around and start pulling all these 13 millimeter bolts out. They are varying lengths and there's some studs and regular bolts and some short studs. So you just want to make sure you take a picture, whatever you got to do to make sure you uh, realize where each one of these is at. And also make sure you have the uh, coolant drain pan underneath you because we uh, cool it coming out of these bolt holes once you pull the bolts out and of course once you pull the pump off of here Now in a couple of these especially these really long ones like this They're gonna be really rusted in there and they're gonna want to twist and break on you So you're gonna have to work them back and forth loosen a little bit in in and keep coming out once they do get far enough like this one You may be turning on it forever. And it's not actually coming out like so And then you go to yank on it. You can't yank it out of there either. What you can do, hand ratchet or power ratchet, like I have, air ratchet. Let me refocus there. Is use the ratchet, turn it, and then something like this to pry it and push it out. And it'll come right out. Long-winded, but it is possible. Let's see how bad this one is. It's just dry in there, full of rust. All right, so me, of course, with having to cut all this stuff out, there's debris everywhere. You're me cleaning the front covers, me debris, all this down here. So what you're gonna want to do is clean up your front cover surface there. Where the water pump mates to it get the old gasket off and then since this is all waterproof as far as being splash resistant we're going to take the uh, hose and we're going to wash this whole area down very well and while we're at it there's two main jackets on the water pump we're going to put the hose through there and flush out the block right there here okay so if you're changing the hose over to the new pump you are want to make a mark on it so it lines up perfectly with the um, pump on here because we're putting the pump and the hose on at the same time so it's got to have the correct angle to it and the way I do it is to put a little bit, bit of white paint across the clamp and the, the, uh, the hose itself and then I'll put a black line across also to make it a little more uh, accurate on there and then you can start taking it apart this little nub on here it's a perfect reference point because it's the same point on the new one also you're going to want to clean the inside of the hose here use some soap and water that'd be the best thing with the rubber hose and you can get the garbage out or all the scale and stuff so that it seals properly once you put it back on something like this look nice and clean on the inside Something like that. That way we know it's aligned properly going back in. Now once you got your front cover all cleaned up, all the mating surfaces of the old gasket and all that, um, if you can, try to suck out all the old coolant from these two big passages. Else they'll just continue leaking while you're putting a new one on there. I use a brake bleeder and I stick the hose in there and suck out all the coolant. You're also gonna wanna blow out with compressed air all of these holes for the bolts that mount up. Finally, you're going to want to spray this area with brake clean and wipe it off. All right, one other thing you want to do before you start bolting the uh, pump back in, you see how all these bolts are all cleaned up? What I did is I took the bolts to a bench grinder with the wire wheel brush on it and I cleaned them up so the threads especially are all clean all the way to the tip so I can start threading in properly from the start and not cross thread deep inside of there into the block and all that. This is how it used to look 
And you can see how the threads get all gunked up, especially down here. Like that. And they they will cross thread going back in. So you need to make sure you clean up at least the threads. The actual uh, shank here, I like to clean that up also because that's where it gets tight going through the front cover and all that. And so I get them nice and shiny like this. And minor pitting like this, it's just fine. The bolt's still strong enough. If they start getting thin on you though, you need to be changing these bolts out. Okay, so once the bolts are all cleaned up, the threads, the shaft, all that stuff, I put anti-seize on the shaft right here where it was corroding before. I'll try to prevent that in the future. A little bit of anti-seize on there. And then the threads, I put thread sealant on there because certain bolts go through coolant passages and they need thread sealant on the bolts. Uh, the manual on this truck, because it's so old I guess, does not specify which ones are which. So I put on all of them, same thing as I do on the four Taurus water pumps. All right, so going back in, like I said, make sure your hose is already attached to the water pump, like we did earlier, and I lined it up perfectly. And then also, I put a little bit of sealant here and there, around on there, so I can get the gasket to stick to the water pump, and we can set the gasket and pump down in here together. You don't actually need the sealant on there. It's a dry gasket system but I just use it as like a high tack on there to hold the gasket in place for us. Kind of place the gasket on there perfect, perfectly in the water pump and then we'll push it down so it sticks. And then it's a little bit tight getting down in here and that's why I glue the gasket to the water pump. Get it down in here and get your hose started down in there, slipped into there. Something like that and then I get this top bolt started all right so as far as bolts they're all friggin different on here I have a uh, actual picture from our parts catalog and but I'll explain them on here real quick this one's a long shouldered bolt regular cap head screw this one this one and this one are all the same length studded bolts that's where they go this one and this one are the full threaded short bolts this one's a regular long headed cap screw bolt okay and this is one right here which you really can't see it's down here is a short fat stud uh, bolt and then down here, down here is another cap head screw bolt like this. It's got a shoulder to it. And now that I'm happy they've all gone through the gasket without binding or tearing it up or rolling the gasket, I'm just gonna go around and tighten them by hand so I can get a feel, make sure they're not cross threading. And we can kind of jump around, put light pressure, snug it down, and then we're gonna do a final torquing on here, which there is no pattern, but I'm just gonna jump around, I'll kind of show that. But uh, first I wanna make sure that these are all lined up. And each one of these you, you know, you bolt up on here and you get threaded in. They're just gonna align the pump better and better and better. That's why I do them all light pressure by hand at first. Let me make sure we don't ruin the gasket or anything weird like that. Get them all in here. And with the anti-seize on there and the, uh, the other stuff, the thread seal, it'll help get through those rust passages on there that we were fighting to take these bolts out. And the torque spec on these is about 240 inch pounds. So we're literally just gonna start from the center, work our way out and just kind of jump around. There's no actual torque spec. And what I didn't mention is before I put all these bolts in while I had this all apart, I made sure that I blew out these passages in here to get all the crud and everything out of there as much as possible. Uh, so there's not debris in there we're trying to throw the new bolts in and this is one of those where you really should go around afterwards and recheck them all 
can almost always find they can go a little bit more before it clicks once it's settled like this and then of course it's a good idea to make sure all of them are torque and you don't miss them I mean one of them I just thought I know I missed right here like new all right well, once the water pump is all torqued down we're satisfied let's go over here and put the clamp back on this uh, large hose that goes over the oil cooler and get that tightened down and then we can start laying down some of our wiring here because it goes behind the hoses get into our stud and then clip this one into our our crank sensor just make sure that that crank sensor is not full of coolant or debris or whatever make sure you blow it out on there and then we'll get our other wire that goes down the oil sending unit lay that in place on the two studs here how to go like this and this You know what's great for these? A socket. Puts the pressure on it evenly all the way around. Pushes them all the way on without a fight. Because they're not cocking in there, they're going straight on. And then you just simply put it onto the sending unit down here. It just sticks right onto the terminal. Next thing we'll do is get these heater hoses right here on and the bypass hose. And we're gonna change them out on mine they didn't look good to me look a little swollen so we're gonna get it on there fight it get it out this other one there we go and we're gonna do the bypass first it's harder to get to than the heater hose one and this is where I'm putting my clamps for ease of access I can't believe these are worm drive clamps from Ford. Got the Ford logo on them. They stopped using these a long time ago. But apparently in 97 they were still using them. Went to that constant tension clamps for everything now. And that's what the heater hose is on here. I'll see that in a second here. Right. Got our heater hose, same thing, I'll do it down here first. And I'll move it the way I need to. Get my clamp in the proper position. And I'll make sure it pushes on fully. We can start clamping down. Now on these constant tension clamps, if you're reusing the old hose, make sure you put it back to the original indents in the hose or else you're going to have a new leak. This one doesn't matter, it's a new hose. Just got to get it down in there. the same thing up here all right now it's time for the water pump pulley pop that back on there and once you get the first bolt on there lined up the rest of them will line up first one in
and I use blue Loctite on these, the medium strength, just so they don't vibrate off of there. And then once you get all these in here, you're gonna to wanna to tighten them crisscross style from each other so that it goes on there evenly. It's gonna be a tight fit. And you can smeg them up for now. And once the belt is on, I'll kind of hold the pulley and we can torque them down. Get our idler back on here. Same thing, I use blue Loctite. And the torque spec on this is about 35 foot pounds. And afterwards, just make sure it spins freely like that. We didn't bind or anything like that. Let's get our tensioner back on so we can get the belt on. These little bolts, these 10 mil bolts, uh, torque spec is 220 inch pounds. And then let's get our belt back on here so we can tighten the rest of the pulley bolts down. It's kind of a weird routing on here. I'll include a diagram of the routing in the description down below so you can reference that. Now the easiest way to get this belt on here is put her on every pulley except for the one right here, our idler right here. We'll pull tension and then we'll slip it under the smooth idler up here on top. That'd be the easiest. And now is the time to tighten these down to spec. It's 220 inch pounds. And this belt's on here nice and tight, so it'll hold it for you while you torque them down. All right. Up next on here is the radiator fan shroud and fan. And I like to put a little bit of blue Loctite on the threads. And then we can start getting this thing shimmied down in here. Past these cooler lines and upper radiator hoses and then we could get the fan in here itself. I know it's kind of hard to see. Get her shroud on a little bit, get past the lines. And now we can start spinning the fan on. All right, once you got your fan all tightened down on there, it's time to bolt the fan shroud to the radiator. And there's two 10 millimeter bolts right here. Tighten those up, just make sure it's hooked in down below down there. And these on both sides should line up perfectly. Let's get the upper radiator hose back on. Should pop right into a groove. There we go. And then we'll put our clamp back on the same spot, same grooves, so there's no leaks like before. Put the other hoses. This one's a tight one. Get it down in there. And we'll adjust it from there. Let's get our air box back in here so we can start filling this thing up. Make sure we get our all our connections back in. Lock down the air box correctly. Both tangs. Push down over here all the way. There we go. Mass airflow. Our push pin, air intake, temp sensor. And then of course, don't forget our PCV hose. Make sure our air intake tube is on there square. Tighten that down. Now once you're satisfied and everything's back together, we need to start filling it up. And it's kind of a pain on here uh, to bleed out. 
Uh, there's a couple different tools you can use to bleed these out. There's a funnel that attaches to the top of the radiator. Um, you, you can use a regular funnel, or there's a vacuum option, but those get expensive, so you alternately can just keep topping it off and letting it bleed out, hot and cold cycles, and get all those pockets out of there. I do recommend a new radiator cap when doing this repair, obviously, unless you just changed it. And then over here, make sure you fill your cooling up in your reservoir, don't forget that. And before you do all that, make sure your drain cock down there is tightened, obviously. Now once you've run the vehicle for a while and you're satisfied there's no leaks, we can go ahead and put this shield back on to the bottom side of the radiator we took off earlier and those four 10 millimeter bolts. Okay, so hopefully yours went way better than mine did. Mine actually uh, got stuck in there, the passenger side bolts on there, about three of them. I had to torch them out of there just to get them out of there. Um, I actually cut the water pump out of there for the last bolt so I can get the torch in there deeper and heat up the, uh, the, the water pump bolt on there to really get it loose without snapping it. So hopefully yours comes right out of there. The rest of it kind of came apart, no problems, uh, but just those few bolts on that side. But if you are having that problem, you're gonna wanna use heat to get them out of there so you can transfer the heat over to the uh, corroded side where it screws into the block, and then you can start working them out of there. I had a video on that, but it got, got corrupted, so maybe in the future something else will come out. But hopefully this helped you guys uh, get your water pump off and back on and torque down properly so it's not leaking anymore.